I'm going to try to do a live demo which allowed me to walk through the whole room, but due to AV issues, I'm going to be tethered to a cord, so apologies for that. Um, so, uh, as, uh, as uh, he said, uh, my name is Johnny Lee. I work in a group called Advanced Technology and Projects Group at Google. Um, one of the projects that we are doing there is called Project Tango. And the purpose of Project Tango is basically to give mobile devices a human scale understanding of space. Now, as you sit in this room, you roughly understand how large the room is, and you also understand roughly your own position within this room. And you do this through a pretty amazing capability of your, of your visual cortex system to essentially use your eyes and other motion sensors in your head to track your position in real time. You can go to a new space that you've never been in before, and as you walk through it, you slowly learn the shape of that space as well as your own location within that. So that's what we're trying to do, is essentially take advantage of human vision and build sensors and software that essentially try to mimic as, as best as we know how humans are able to do this in an unknown space. Now, if you look at the compute capacity of mobile processors, uh, this is your sort of standard Moore's Law chart. Um, it's a logarithmic chart, and these are just uh, some example processors that I put on there just to show the trend line. Now, the nice thing about it is today, there are processors like the NVIDIA K1 that you've heard about over the past few months that uh, are dramatically power, more powerful than previous, sensor, previous processors and nicely follow this continuing trend. Now, if you put another uh, interesting object on there, which is Stanley, the vehicle that won the 2005 Pepper Grand Challenge, we have actually surpassed the amount of compute power it takes to drive autonomously for 132 miles in the Mojave Desert without human assistance. This actually happened last quarter, I mean, uh, last Q4. So the, the short story is, is that the compute is here. The compute is available to do really interesting things on mobile devices. The only thing that's missing is the hardware and software. So what Project Tango is trying to do is essentially try to pull forward, work with industry partners, work with sensor vendors, work with universities to essentially move forward the state of mobile sensing, uh, particularly in 3D, on hardware and produce software algorithms uh, ideally accessible to the Android ecosystem. So an example of where we started, this is the first prototype that we built. This was actually back last spring, a little less than a year ago, actually. Uh, this was a seven inch tablet uh, built on Android. Uh, and as you can see, it's basically a sandwich of acrylic, uh, plastic, and a PCB. Uh, but you also notice that on, on it are rather uh, unusual lenses. Uh, these are actually automotive grade sensors. Um, with glass lenses and typically things you don't find in the mobile device. Uh, because in order to do what we wanted to do, we had to not only write software, but actually start building our own hardware. So what is in this? If you look at the top view, uh, this is the top of the tablet. Uh, we have a front eye, front facing fisheye lens. We also have a high res rear facing main camera. This is sort of your traditional um, uh, imager that you might find on a cell phone. We also have a rear-facing fisheye camera, which is dedicated for motion tracking, and a depth sensor uh, a solution on the device. Now, this was the first prototype we, mailed, we built, and uh, it was quick and dirty, but it actually did the job, and we could get our software team and university partners started to work on software algorithms. Our second prototype is uh, what we sort of made public to the world. Um, I don't know how many of you just said, uh, have seen the Project Tango video, uh, but this is the device that we show. Uh, and it's a five inch phone prototype, also running Android, uh, but it has all the same sensors, except now compressed into a mobile phone form vector. It has a high performance uh, main camera. It has some additional chips inside to accelerate the computer vision processing, uh, integrated depth sensing, a motion tracking camera, as well as a front facing wide angle camera as well. Just to give you a sense of the kind of data that comes into the device, this is uh, an image from one of the early prototypes. Um, you can basically see there's two cameras that have radically different fields of view. And part of that is because your eye has a tremendous ability to have extremely wide field of view, um, up to 210 degrees, according to some studies. Uh, but you also have this foveated area in the middle. So you have high detail in the, in the center. So these two cameras together basically give us something somewhat analogous to human vision. Uh, the other component that's on the device is an integrated depth sensor. Uh, many of you have probably seen depth sensing in some form. Uh, it detects shape instead of color. 
Um, so as you see, uh, even though there's a window there and there's different texture and different color and different illumination, uh, the shape and geometry of the surfaces are available to the processing. And as a result, we can take that raw data and it gives us understanding of geometry, independent of light. Um, this is a diagnostic screen from the white phone. Um, let me show you a video of, uh, of the system running. So it's important to remember that there's basically two major parts to Project Tango. One is tracking, which is understanding where you are in space, and the other one is mapping, which is capturing geometry. This is a video back from August. Uh, this is Joel Hesch, he's uh, one of the computer vision engineers on the project. Uh, and this is that seven inch prototype you saw. Uh, and there's, uh, let me pause it for a second so you can see what's going on on the screen. Uh, on the left side is basically the raw sensor data coming in. We have the fisheye lens, we have hardware accelerated feature tracking, we also have carefully time stamped and synchronized gyro and accelerometer data. These two bits of data come into the software, come into the device, and uh, in real time are computed combined to generate this 3D trajectory. So uh, this is the uh, building in Sunnyvale. Um, it's the Motorola building, actually. Uh, and this is basically a 40,000 square foot building. So what he has done is he has walked around the entire first floor, and now he's walking up stairways. And you see that it's a full 3D trajectory. It is not a 2D trajectory. There's no constraints of floor or X and Y constraints. So just like you walk through the environment and you observe this optical flow, um, we are doing the exact same thing. The only requirement that we have is light. We don't require Wi-Fi beacons, we don't require GPS, we don't require Bluetooth beacons. All we require is that there is enough light and enough texture in the environment to actually be able to walk around the space. So what Joel has done here is basically walked around this 40,000 square foot building, walked up five flights of stairs, up uh, across the entire building on the fifth floor, and is now walking down five flights of stairs back to his original starting position. Uh, in the end, uh, what happens is that we have about a 1% error. So no GPS, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, no pre-existing map. Uh, or we have an odometry system that basically gives you 1% indoor positioning. Um, but we use just computer vision and sensor feeding. Now, what's exciting is when we combine that data with a depth sensor. So this is exactly the same thing you saw before, um, except uh, we have now added the raw data from the depth sensor. So the white line is generated using the odometry data you've seen before, and the colored data is the point cloud that's generated from the depth sensor. And literally all we're doing at the moment is just taking the raw point cloud data and posing it using our odometry system. And as you can see, basically in real time, as you walk through the building with a mobile device, you can actually capture its full 3D geometry. You can actually see, um, this is a top-down view of the stairwell, and the alignment of data is so good, you can actually still see down the middle of the stairwell. Uh, the vertical accuracy of this data set was measured with a survey-grade laser scanner, and we are 0.6% uh, off from laser, laser ground. Now, you've probably seen data sets like this from industrial scanners before. Uh, what's unusual is that we're doing it in a mobile consumer device in real time. Uh, what this also allows you to do is basically it allows the user to take one of these devices, takes it home, and now they can generate a 3D map of their home basically as quickly as they can walk around it. So this is a video that's accelerated 4X, but it takes, basically took me about two minutes to walk through my house. That was my living room, my laundry room, a guest bathroom, uh, an office bedroom, uh, my bedroom, and then the master bathroom. Uh, red is basically low, or the floor, and blue is high. Um, high meaning the walls. So you can kind of quickly see where the walls signal. Uh, this data set uh, has a couple of duplicate errors, but it'll show, we'll zoom into one of the uh, rooms just to show you uh, sort of the fidelity of data that's being computed on the device in real time. So you can quite clearly see the geometry of the tub, the toilet, and the sink. So if you're imagining <coughs> writing a game, that's plenty of data to have 
like little army men kind of storming your bathtub. You really want to know. <laughs> This is a, a data set that um, a company called Matterport. Uh, we gave these white phones out um, uh, about a month ago to 200 developers. Matterport was one of the ones that got early devices. Um, and their background is basically 3D um, scanning of indoor spaces. So they have one of our white prototype devices. Uh, and he's walking around capturing a data set of uh, these, this garage. And this is the data set that they are able to produce using the sensor data. Um, so this basically, there's a certain amount of fidelity you can compute on the device in real time, but there's a much higher grade of fidelity if you give the device a little bit more time to com compute. So let's, that's all I have for the videos. Let me switch to... Okay, so if this device is work, if this TV works and behaves, uh, as I mentioned, because we're in a mobile device, we're pretty unconstrained in where we can walk. I'm actually much more constrained by the length of this cable, unfortunately. Uh, so this is one of our early um, prototype Project Tango devices. Um, we have uh, distributed most of the units that we have available. Unfortunately, I wish I had more of these. Uh, but let me just give you a quick example of a few things we can do with the device. So, you have to pay attention to that screen. Uh, unfortunately, I apologize for it being small. Um, so this is one of the sort of raw sensor um, uh, diagnostic screens, where essentially we can quickly see kind of a, a holodeck style grid of uh, the environment. If I wanted to, say, look at this projector, I can take a picture, measure it, and I can actually measure the height of that projector. Because uh, we actually have uh, metric data about the environment. More meaningful. Let's picture of the screen and measure the height of the screen. So when you have 3D sensing in a phone, essentially what it does is it's no longer just a 2D camera; it's a full 3D camera. So we actually can capture geometry about the environment. Now that's one of the things that basically almost comes for free when you have a depth camera in in the phone. Let me show you our odometry. So this is basically the diagnostics app that you saw in the video. You can see as I, as I pan around the room, uh, it tracks the location of the phone. And as I walk forward, I walk back. I can basically uh, track my position in the room up to where the cable gets long. If I stand here and I move the phone in circles, it tracks that in real time. Now one of the things we can do with just that amount of data um, is start to show some applications that just use odometry. So this is an early uh, sort of prototype and experience that we put together. We, we're supporting the Unity environment. And basically, it's a snowy forest. You probably played with games where you can tilt and, and ro rotate the phone to sort of pan around the environment. But it's, it's a, there's a moose around there somewhere. I can try to get to the moose if I can. But I'm, again, sort of limited by the, uh, the cable. So you can say I leave my footsteps in the snow. <clears throat> Jesus, they'll run away from me, unfortunately. Uh, but you can clearly see, it keeps track of where I walked. Uh, and I can just sort of look at my path. Uh, and if I look down as I walk, I actually sort of generate footsteps along the way. <clears throat> Uh, 
Uh, this is also one of the early prototypes, um, kind of inspired by uh, Portal. Everyone loves Portal. Um, so this is a, a, a sort of a mini game where I can pick up blocks and toss them on. Oops, I have to pick up this block. So the nice thing about these games is that if I move one meter in the real world, I move one meter in the virtual space. So there's a, basically a one-to-one -one correspondence between how I'm moving. So that blue button is actually somewhere on that table. I have to come over here and drop it. I'm running out of space so I can throw it. <laughs> <laughs> So that just kind of, these are tech, tech demos, we're not game developers, so these are sort of meant for other developers to sort of take these tools and sort of make more inventive environments around them. Uh, let me show you just one of the other tech demos. Uh, obviously, if you know where you are in your house and you have some notion of the floor and how you're moving through it, there's this fantasy of having sort of a real-time strategy game run around here where you can conquer this part of the living room or conquer this part of the living room. Um, and this is also just a sort of a quick demo of that, where this is a, a fantasy environment with a wizard inside. If I want to get down to the wizard's level, all I have to do is put a crops down, sort of look at him on the floor. I can look at the plants and the trees and then tell him to go over here and he'll start walking. And if I want to sort of help out my character, I would sort of walk with him and stay with him as a character. Now, Again, I'm sort of limited by this cable, unfortunately, but as much as the geometry I have in the space, I can essentially keep walking and this will continue to work okay. Uh, while this loads, this is a, another example of just using the tracking and odometry data to look at 3D models. So this is a crowd that's very used to looking at 3D geometry, Normally you have to use the keyboard and mouse and all these other controls to sort of pan and rotate and move it around. Uh, but instead what we can do is essentially just walk up and get closer to it. Uh, let me switch devices real quick. So this is a 3D model of a Vespa or a scooter, and if I wanted to uh, take a closer look at some component of it, um, all I have to do is walk closer. So if I want to look at the handlebars, the cables loose. Okay. If I want to look at the handlebars, I just have to walk up the handlebars. If I want to look at the suspension, I just sort of crouch down and look at the undercarriage. Or I can just walk up here and look at the stitching. So those are demos that just use the odometry. Uh, let me show you uh, demos that use So just like we had the odometry before, now I can basically walk around. This cable is fitting. So as you can see, there's your heads. You can see the individual lumps. If I sort of pan down, I can sort of touch the floor. If I look up, I will see this big screen in front of me. If I look at the top-down view, you can see the geometry relative to my position as I walk, as I walk back and forth with the limits of this cable, uh, it continues to work. Okay. <coughs> this device is having a hard time with this video. Now.
So let me just show you one last demo, which just shows a little bit of the depth of what you can do once you have the depth data coming into the into the game. And I touch this, touch the floor. And essentially, what this demo does is it puts grass wherever there's floor. So it recognizes that there's nothing to my right because there's a big wall, so it doesn't put any grass there. So as I point around, essentially, I can start to take my virtual uh, my real world geometry to start to use that information in the virtual game to essentially make surfaces or uh, characters respond to my real world environment. <coughs> and so I think once you have all these sensors into a phone, it's very interesting. There's a lot of things that can be done, and there's a lot of new applications that are possible. And so as part of Project Tango, what we're doing is we're working with the ecosystem with hardware partners and with software partners to essentially try to build hardware that can do this as well as build user experiences that will ultimately be uh, available to consumers. So the future, in my opinion, is awesome. Once we bring all these things together, and I think that we can do it better, do it better and faster together. Thanks.